Hi guys. Okay, so finally going to make this video, Avalon's birth video, and hopefully I can get it done in less than 15 minutes. Dagny's staring at me like, what are you doing, Mom? I'm just talking to a camera. Um, so December 5th, she was born on December 6th, so we're kind of going back. December 5th in the morning, I started having contractions about 8 to 10 minutes apart, and then some were even 20 minutes apart. And nothing big of it, that was probably just early labor starting. And um, had that throughout the day, I had started to feel like I didn't want to be bugged at all by anyone, but people kept calling during the day, which was driving me nuts. And then, um, towards the evening, we kind of packed up Dagny to get ready to go because I was bringing, we were bringing him to one of my, um, my good friend's place to stay over that night because we were scheduled for a C-section the following morning. So we took him to my friend's place. He stayed there overnight. I came home. What? <laughs> Dagny's staring at me like I'm crazy. What? <laughs> eat, eat your banana. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> yeah, see, he thinks I'm funny. Um, so that evening, my husband and I ate our last dinner, I guess just the two of us, and then um, he went to bed, actually, yeah, he was reading in bed, I got the, the hospital bags ready again, I unpacked them and repacked them, make sure everything was ready to go, he went to bed. I could not sleep whatsoever. So I was on my phone, I was texting my friend and um, still having contractions. And then finally about, I want to say 4.30, I went and I slept on my on Dagny's bed actually because his bed's pretty comfortable. And I slept for about an hour and then we had to get up at about 5.30 because we had to be there at 6.30 in the morning at the hospital. So we get there at 6.30 on December 6th and well we don't get there for 6 30 but we get there for 6 I think it is our quarter to 6 register at the front of the hospital and then we make our way up to the birth center and I'm still having contractions um, 8 to 10 minutes apart get up there we do all the intake forms and such we go to our room I get into my lovely gown do the urine sample and then I'm put in bed and they put me on the non-stress test and then uh, another nurse comes in to put my IV in. First they tried to put the IV in my wrist, did not work. Oh my gosh, that was so painful, even worse than contractions. Then they finally got it on the top of my hand, but it still hurt. It just felt like a massive bruise throughout my whole hand. Um, one of the other nurses after she did it said that it was done kind of poorly. And I can vouch for that because IVs aren't supposed to hurt that bad while they're in there. I, well, I've never had them hurt that bad. So they wanted me to get two bags of um, IV fluids in me before I went to into the OR. So while that's set up, I was on the non-stress test. Baby wasn't moving, so I had to lie on my left side. Sure enough, baby's moving and I'm clicking the thing like crazy. And it's also picking up my contractions again. And sure enough, she confirmed it. it was, I was having about contractions every 8 to 10 minutes apart. So I passed the non-stress test, or the baby passed the non-stress test. Um, then after that, they just did the heart monitoring, I guess you could say. And, um, yeah. And so I just, we sat in the bed. I, well, I sat or I lied in bed, talked to my husband. Eventually he went downstairs to get something to eat because he hadn't eaten that morning. And I was so thirsty, I wanted something to drink. And no, you can't have anything. And they wouldn't even give me ice chips. And my mouth was so dry. What? <laughs> eat your banana. <laughs> Silly kid. Um, so that's that. And some of the other nurses came in to introduce themselves to say, I'm the OR nurse. I'll be there while you're having your C-section. And um, so that was pretty good. I liked being introduced to them. So I knew who was going to be in there. Then my midwife came and said, hi, I'm here, how are you doing? And I told her I was having contractions, and she was like, that's a good thing because you wanted to be in labor when you went in to have the C-section. So it was an early labor. Um, then she left. The OB that was going to be doing the C-section came in with the portable ultrasound to make sure baby hadn't flipped head down. 
sure enough, baby was still breached and I knew this because I would have probably felt baby move. Then, um, another nurse comes in to say, okay, soon we'll be going down to the OR. I went to the bathroom because I had to go pee and sure enough, my mucus plug had come out. And um, so yeah, and then my husband got suited up in his scrubs the nurse came back, we walked down to the OR. He sat outside of the OR, of course, because they still were prepping me and he couldn't be in there. So I went in, I was sitting on the operating table and um, just before this, I was I was timing my contractions then they went down to six minutes apart. So they were com becoming regularly. Um, so no idea of if I progressed or what have you because I was never checked. So I'm in the OR on the operating table, the nurses are getting everything ready, I have this nice warm blanket over me and I'm just sitting there kind of in my own little world dealing with the contractions and trying to prep myself to get the spinal because that was the one thing I was most terrified. I'm not terrified of needles, I can handle needles no problem. It was the what ifs if something was going to go wrong with the spinal or if I was going to jump and then I paralyze myself and so on and so forth. Um, and also the loss of control that you get with a spinal, right? Because your whole body's frozen. So finally the um, um, anesthesiologist came in. He was so nice, funny, great sense of humor, um, which was great because I've heard some not, no ni not so nice things about anesthesiologists. So he was great. Put the spinal in, um, which was kind of painful it felt like a pinch really like a hard pinch going in and then I automatically lied down they put up the screen um, the nurses were still prepping and the anesthesiologist put the the oxygen nose thing in my in my nose I was allowed to wear my glasses thank goodness so I could see what was going on and when the baby came out <clears throat> they brought in my husband he sat beside me the OB came in My midwife came in and then some NICU nurses came in and one of the NICU nurses, oh such the, the sweetest lady ever, she was actually one of the NICU nurses for Dagny when he was in the NICU for the first week of his life. So it was really nice to see a familiar face there too. Um, the OB announced, daddy wants to announce the sex of the baby when the baby comes out. Thank goodness they remember that because I wanted him, I wanted to hear it come from him. Um, at this point, I was pretty sure we were having a girl anyways, so um, I knew. And then, um, like not even five, ten minutes later, they, the baby comes out, they say, Dad, look over, he looks over, and um, I'll just never forget when he says, it's a girl, and I just burst out in tears. <laughs> and I don't know if it was like, it, it must have been like a whole bunch of emotions. Finally finding out it, I was right, it was a girl. Finally, it was at the end of our our journey together and I was finally gonna be able to meet this baby of mine that I've been growing inside for so long. And, um, and I'm gonna get teary-eyed. I was just, I was so happy, but then I was so fearful because my son had to be in the NICU too. And I didn't want that to happen, so I was so, I was like, crossing my fingers that um, she was okay and I kept saying is she okay how is she doing and they were doing all their stuff the NICU nurses and checking her and she's crying away and all I could see is her thighs I'm like she has chunky thighs like she does have rolls like at least three rolls on her thighs and I was just waiting for the okay and the, the switch over for my midwife to to take over things and um, sure enough, she was perfectly fine, and um, my midwife took, actually, they did the vitamin K shot, and then my midwife took over, and my midwife was listening to her chest, and just checking on her, and... I weighed her, and she was 8 pounds, 15, 15 ounces, and I remember them saying, oh, she's a big girl, and... Actually, I think that they, they said that when she first came out, to be honest. And um, I bet you anything, if I went into labor, if I had her vaginally on my own, she would have been um, nine pounds, most likely. So everything was good. They wrapped her up, gave her to my husband, and my husband came over. And 
So I could see her and her mouth was just moving away and I couldn't help but feel guilty because um, I really wanted to have her latched on. I couldn't have her latch on in the OR, but um, so I saw her and then soon thereafter my husband had to leave and she went with him into the, um, what is it called, the uh, recovery room and they did whatever they did to me, got me onto another bed and wheeled me down to the recovery room and she was there and I had to be there for about an hour. And then my midwife came in and I said, can I, I want to start breastfeeding. And they took the blankets off and had her um, skin to skin on me. And it was such the tough, it's so awkward and tough to get her latched on in that lying down position. And I had that little, um, the clamp thing that goes on your finger or your toe. And I can't remember if it's for your oxygen level or not. But it was driving me nuts because I wanted to hold her in a good position, but that, that thing on my finger was just getting in the way. So finally I was cleared um, from the, the recovery room because um, I guess I could move my feet so the freezing was wearing off. And so yeah, we had our bre first breastfeeding session and um, it went pretty well. She, she latched on and she was kind of fussy too because the position was just so awkward and we got into my room and it was a uh, semi-private we had requested a private and I was just having her latched on and onto my breasts and stuff like that and it's funny, another girl came in that just had a baby too, and she had it vaginally with one of the other midwives and my my midwife, because she had to go in and help. And so, it was funny us both being in there at the same time, but then eventually a, a private room came available, and I, uh, I went, they wheeled me down to that room, and it was nice and quiet, and it was so hot in there that you couldn't control the heat, so the heat was up, and I was just so hot. But it's one, one funny thing about the C-section that I didn't know is one of the medications that they give you afterwards makes you itch like crazy. I swear I felt like I had a, a billion mosquito bites all over my body. And there's one picture where um, you can kind of see the, the red scratch marks on my face and my neck. chest but I was just itchy all over and I think it was itchy for about I want to say 48 hours afterwards so and I wanted to also mention I was terrified to have the catheter put in and that was a breeze and catheter coming out was fine too <laughs> didn't bug me at all there's one thing I was worried about but our hospital stay was okay um, I still I do not like hospitals the just the aura around hospitals just makes me very anxious and stuff and um, so yeah but she was she roomed in my bed she never was in her bassinet unless she had to have like some test done which she had her uh, glucose sugars tested because she was a bigger baby or what have you but she passed with flying colors and um, they went down to they were at a normal range, high, uh, the high end of normal range, and then they went down to the, the average normal range and um, kept saying it was probably most likely because she was getting enough colostrum, but she was latched onto me for hours and hours and hours and hours and on, on end. I swear, she must have been awake for at least five or six hours in total, never slept, and then she would conk out for about three or four hours and then be on the breast again for that long. Um, but my milk didn't come in until day five, so it was a rough, rough, rough five days. Oh, it was so bad, and she was dehydrated, and, um, yeah, it just, it wasn't the greatest five days. So, um, same thing happened with my son. His didn't come, mine didn't come in until five days after with him, too. So, uh, yeah, I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff in there, but, um... 
I might make a video about my hospital experiences or tips of what to expect for a c-section and recovery and all that jazz so um, hopefully this was an okay video and you enjoyed it and it's not as exciting as um, say a home birth or a vaginal birth but it's how she was born and it's special to us and her so I thought I would share with all of you guys so I'm gonna get going and I will talk to you later bye guys Dude.